so many people talk about trespassing issues and it's a real shame that people have to deal with trespassing you know whether you're leasing land or you own land it's very expensive and it was really cool back in the day everyone just shared their land land wasn't worth much people didn't really specifically put a lot into their deer habitat their deer habitat improvements and try to make a quality herd um, there's so much you can do people enjoy that it's very enjoyable times have changed over the last 30 40 years and one of the big problems is you spend all this time and effort and put it into your property and you have a trespasser come through and set your deer herd back for a week or two because they walked through and spooked a lot of deer and when it comes to mature bucks and those older bucks you're trying to create they don't tolerate much hunting pressure it's interesting we have a sign right there over my shoulder going back to our property back there and the neighbor has a sign right here going over to their property now this is an older sign but there's a sign right there you can see our property lines actually over there <laughs> that white post that's a surveyed mark about 20 yards past this snow trespass so we actually own that tree their land is about 20 yards that way regardless so i really don't care as long as we're not putting a stand right here on our on what they think is their property when it's ours but bottom line is they have a right to put that sign there i have a right to put that sign right there who really cares you know people the, the one the people that i find have the biggest problem with no trespassing signs on a property or people enforcing no trespassing laws guess who they are they're the trespassers they're the ones that care the most because they used to have free reign of a place they really didn't have any connection to the land let's face it people around here are paying three four five thousand dollars an acre for hunting land 100 acre parcel do the math almost a half a million dollars for hunting land people are paying that much it was really cool back in the day when you can knock on a door you get permission to hunting land and there's still people that do that and that's awesome but that's a shrinking number because people are starting to recognize the value of their land for hunting people pay big dollars for that land people will pay lease dollars for that land which typically are about one one hundredth of the cost of owning that land it's still expensive it's still an investment and so when you have land out there and people expect to use it for free like trespassers do it's disrespectful to not only the land owner but the land itself so there's several ways that i like to combat trespassers without being a jerk about it first of all get to know your neighbors we came in here we have a neighbor down below we had neighbors that were buying this chunk of land right here we've met our farming neighbors out here and another neighbor that owns on the bottom over on this side and they're all non-trespassing people they're not going to trespass Two summers ago, we had a group of people come up this access and go out into the field during the summertime like they were having a picnic, like they thought it was their land. We don't like that. I don't go to your yard and have a picnic in your front yard next to your vehicle. What's it any different? You know, we own this land. It's interesting, I had someone from Australia. They knocked me for something about trespassing. I think it was Australia. I'm sorry if I get that that wrong but they're saying that there's no no trespassing laws you can just use everyone's land you can go anywhere well that's really cool in a, in a more socialist type country but where you have a free country like the united states and you can actually buy land that you've worked really hard and saved for and worked a whole life to buy you tend to want to keep people off it because you want to enjoy it it doesn't matter if you own a quarter acre or a city lot with your house or you actually own some acreage it's sacred to you. it's your property you can do anything you want with it most important you can keep people off when you get to go know your neighbors you can find out what they're doing dylan pointed out when you get a new hunting lease what's the first thing you should do go meet your neighbors because if that lands has never been leased or if they had lease leasers on it before they didn't care about people walking on it or it hasn't been leased for a few years the neighbors might have an expect expectation that no one's there and when people think that no one's there next to them, they tend to wander a little bit across the line. Even the best of people will wander a little bit. But when they know someone is there and using it, like in the case of getting a new lease, getting to know those people, setting expectations is a great thing to do. It's a first step in starting to combat trespassers, trespassers because people that aren't necessarily trespassers are not doing this to hurt you in any way. They're just taking advantage of the lines a little bit. Won't do so when you just let them know that you're in the area and you're actually hunting. One of the things I've used in the past and Dylan's used too, we have one where we set it over, we had a water hole camera. Literally the strap was cut, the camera was put in the water hole. It was well onto the property, hundreds of yards. We suspect we know who did it. This is back in the day, I would say 2010 maybe, 2009, 2011, somewhere around there in, in uh, Wisconsin. So we took that same camera, put it on a tree, and then we hung another one up high to try to catch that person. Never worked out where we caught him, 
But using fake or dummy cameras is a great way. People come into a location, they see a camera. We have a camera that we had right over here. So if someone's trespassing on this bench, they see the camera, they don't go on. It's pretty easy. It doesn't matter if it's a dead camera. You're not putting it there to catch critters. You're just putting it there so that someone sees it. It's a junk camera, not working. They see it and they don't walk over there. Maybe even setting them up. If you've had theft problems in the past, put a dummy camera on a tree, put a camera up in the air. They focus on that one. It's right out in the open and you're getting their picture and video of them coming on your property. I knew someone in Michigan that did that. He actually caught them after they broke into a shed with a wheelbarrow full of tree stands and other gear and tools walking right by the camera. He was able to actually catch one of them and prosecute them. So it's something you can do not only deter trespassers, but also catch them if they're in the act and maybe even prosecute. I have a neighbor in Wisconsin who sent me a picture of a trespasser asking who it was. They had a nice shed. It ended up being one of the bigger sheds in the, of a big buck in the area, 170 plus inch buck. And this person was trespassing right through the middle of his property. He found out who they were. He just simply asked them to return the shed. Never stepped foot on the property again. It's camera monitor and patrol and he would prosecute the next time. Even with someone who's a blatant trespasser in that case will typically stay off the land when they know they've been caught, they know they're being watched, they know there's cameras out there, other people in, the, in a small community know they were trespassing, word gets out, and they make sure you're not doing it again. But those cameras and fake cameras can go a long ways to doing that, doing so, keeping people off. Also signs, again, you know, people used to care about putting signs out. You know, it's terrible. They're putting signs around their property they just spent a half a million dollars for. Think about it. You're paying a lot of taxes, you're paying a lot for that property, 100,000, 50,000, whatever the amount is, it's a lot of money. You have a right to put no trespassing signs on because it's all it's all fine to think, oh, kumbaya. You're gonna have, just let your neighbors come on the property. We're gonna have picnics on everyone's property. Let's go around, we'll dance and sing and go on, on each other's properties. We'll skip a little bit. There's birds in the background, butterflies flying around your head. It's all kumbaya. That's not the way it works. What happens is when you don't put signs on, people take advantage of you. You wanna be good neighbors? The best form of being a good neighbor is to establish boundaries. You put up signs, they put up signs. No big deal. Don't feel slighted because your neighbor's putting up a sign. They just want to protect the value of their investment and enjoyment of the land, and you should do the same. One of the first deterrents for stopping trespasses is just simply putting a sign up. Because if you don't put a sign up, how do you know that people even know that it's your land or where the boundary is? It's pretty easy nowadays. You look at hunt wise, you see where, the, where your boundary is. You can even click on the landowner and see their number, their phone number, right on there. They usually have a phone number, contact information to get a hold of them. Roads around the land is really important. We have a road that comes right into this location. So we can actually walk back here. We can check and see if anyone's in the area. I can look at this road right here. I can see my stake. I can notice that no one's been here. Roads are a great deterrent. Some people think, I've had landowners question me, well, if I put a road there, my neighbor's gonna use it for, to trespass. Typically, that is not the case. In fact, it's the opposite. They see that road there. They don't put a stand or blind right next to the road because you could walk by at any time and ruin your, their hunt. Not by even trying to ruin their hunt. It's just you're accessing your land to hunt. There's a road there. You walk down it. They have a stand next to it. Most hunters don't want to set themselves up to have an unenjoyable sit because the neighbor's walking right by on that road that they built to navigate and circle the, their property, go through their property, check for no trespassing signs, blowdowns on trees, holes in fences, whatever it might be, or simply just to retrieve a deer to get in there. Another point is what, what that road allows you to do, putting signs up, is that you're establishing a presence. Like Dylan was talking about that new lease that you get into. When you have signs, when you have roads that are being years of, used, if you put in roads on your property, you're establishing, establishing a presence. You're telling the neighbors that, hey, I'm going to be in this location. You're seeing that I'm in this location and most landowners aren't gonna trespass at that point. But if you're not establishing your presence, you're not putting roads in, you're not putting signs up, you're not putting cameras out, whatever it might be, they have no idea you're even there. Everyone has boundaries nowadays, like we talked about. You can see those on your phone. You know, again, we use HuntWise, you can see the boundary right on your phone. You can walk right to it with a GPS point. Something a little bit less subtle, as you can see, after we had 20 people walk through, taking a picnic out on our land and on the neighbor's land, they weren't welcome on either. I established a pretty big knockdown area right here, right over the road. That road, unless I ever buy this property or they buy my property, 
isn't ever going to be used again. There's no reason to go between these two properties right here ever. So I knocked down those trees to make sure that not so subtly that picnic group that comes up here, which happened to not be the neighbor, I don't even know still where they came from. They're trespassing. In fact, that knockdown is probably 30 yards, 40 yards off our border. We have a stand location that way, another 80 yards. Our field edge out there is probably 100, 120 yards from us right now. And then they went beyond there. So very easy to tell. Obviously, we don't want you here. We have a sign here. They have a sign here. It's no harm, no foul. But bottom line is a knockdown like this could be a big deterrent because then if someone drives a side-by-side -side up here, and it's interesting, last year we had side-by-side -side tracks coming right here from down below. So someone did come up here to this point. We had a trespasser from down below. I cut down the same timber there. They had actually driven through the property a mile, went out in the neighbors, and then came back 20 minutes later. We have trail cam footage of them. And I just figured they wouldn't back, be back again. They just didn't look like a hunter for certain reasons. And I wasn't too concerned about them. It's middle of summer. And uh, they just will never do it again unless they actually get a chainsaw out and, and uh, work on it really hard. But we've established a presence. We've established a strong presence here. And in a not so subtle way, we're just telling them we don't want you here. And that's okay. We own the land. If that, that's, a, that's something we have a right to do. Then finally, I'll close with a couple thoughts. But you really need to establish that presence along with getting to know your neighbor establish some very strong deer retrieval rules and what i mean by that is i had a client already this year where neighbor has five acres he has 80. neighbor hunts 20 yards off the border on a gas line power line right away and literally puts a bait pile within 15 yards 10 yards of my client's property facing my client's property he shot two deer they go in, ruin the hunt. He was going to hunt with his daughter the one night. Neighbors back there tracking deer because every deer he shoots is going to go on my client's property. That's setting yourself up for a big problem. Whether you bulldoze a trail right along your border there, whether you put signs up, there needs to be a strong deterrent there that someone can't just come in, buy a couple acres, and hunt your land effectively. You have to establish some rules. You know, I've established some rules in various properties of a hunted where if someone's and it happened in the up of michigan i had someone on public land bait pile on my land it's how close to the land they were they shoot a deer i told them i met them I said you're not getting your deer if it goes on there i want to know about it because we'll go get it we'll try to find someone to tag it and retrieve it i don't want it to go to waste but bottom line is you're not going to walk through thousands of acres of public land hunt my border and it's same with private land next door and they ex just expect to go retrieve a deer. Now, I told the person, if your stand's 200 yards away, 100 yards away, whatever it is, and you make a bad hit and it makes it on the property, I'll help you get it, which I did, that same person. In fact, he let me know that it went onto the property. He was colorblind, couldn't follow the blood trail. We found it went the opposite direction. Jake was with me. Jake ended up finding his deer and finding the blood. It went the opposite way. I think Jake was about five years old, four years old, somewhere around there. We went out, got the tractor, helped him get it out, went over the neighbors at the cabin to celebrate a little bit. And, uh, and that's, you have to establish those boundaries. And just because you're establishing boundaries doesn't mean that you can't be a good neighbor in the end. Doesn't mean you can't help them. But you have to protect yourself and your investment. You can't let people take advantage of you because you give them an inch, they'll take a mile, and even good people do that. And that's why you have to establish these clear boundaries. You have to put signs up. Make sure you have strict deer retrieval rules. And around here, it's pretty simple. You know, if, if a deer goes on my property, I want you to call me and I'll tell you when you can go in there and I'll probably go with you because I want to make sure you didn't shoot it on my property. And that if it becomes a habit because you're sitting five yards off the line and you're shooting deer that are on my property or off, then there's going to be a problem because you're just trying to take advantage of me or the situation. And it's the same with me. If there's a deer that I shoot and it goes down in the neighbors right here, what am I going to do first? I'm going to call the neighbor. I'm gonna go over and knock on the door. Say, we have a deer that goes out there. Is anyone hunting? Can we go there after dark? I'm gonna have you going on my land after dark because I don't want to disturb the deer as much. Establish some rules, establish some boundaries. People won't take advantage of you. You know the cool thing about all this is that what I find is if you have trespassing problems, typically it's because you don't have signs, you're being complacent, they don't know you're there. A lot of it's more, you know, it's not real hostile. But if you have problems and you take care of them right away and you establish rules, those problems that are here in scale diminish quickly over time to where you don't have any more problems 
at all. Problems don't typically creep up when you have a property and you've been maintaining and managing the trespassing concerns and you've taken steps to combat the trespassing concerns that we've listed here. Those are just some of the ways you can take care of it. Some, you, you do have to be a little bit firm, but I expect the, my neighbors to be a little bit firm too. I don't expect them to allow me to take advantage of them and vice versa. It's all about respecting each other's land, being able to enjoy the land. I wish it was all kumbaya and we had flowers and butterflies and birds singing in the background and we can skip through each other's lands and have picnics. That's not the way it works, folks. Enjoy your land, enjoy your investment, respect each other's properties, get to know your neighbors. And in the end, that's the best call for combating trespass concerns and making sure that you don't have problems creep up over time. Make sure that you take care of those problems right now so you can reduce them. And then you can just simply enjoy your land, create the habitat, and have a great hunt this fall. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes so that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.